Hey guys, what's going on? It's Vic here, back with another Madden 22 rebuild. In today's episode, we're going to be rebuilding the New York Giants, and I know it's been a minute since I uploaded, just not really motivated to upload during the summer, and I've been really working hard on my second channel, and I just dropped the third channel, so if you want to go see the links in the description to that, uh, if you guys want to go check that out and support it, but um, if you see, hear me being a little bit quiet, it's because um, I just moved in to an apartment in Tallahassee. I just recently got accepted into FSU. And yeah, I'm gonna be going to Florida State University. I know it's not as good as Florida, but I also did get accepted into University of Florida, but I decided to go to FSU. It's a little closer to home to me. But anyways, guys, apart from that, you guys really don't care about my personal life and neither do I care about most people's. So let's just get into this video. So we got here Evan Neal from the draft. They actually had a pretty good draft with Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau. So this is actually pretty good here as, um, yeah, Evan Neal is obviously pretty good, pretty good. Um, there was just a lot of injury concerns with him, first of all, and same thing with Kayvon Thibodeau, but they seem to be doing pretty well right now in preseason. Kayvon Thibodeau, he didn't really get a lot of snaps in preseason so far. Yet again, it's only like, what, the first week of preseason, maybe second week? I don't know. I don't really watch it that much. I just watch a bunch of clips on it. Evan Neal seems to struggle with balance as he did in college, but other than that, it's really not that bad. And uh, But the rest of the team is pretty bad. <laughs> first of all, Sterling Shepard is our best receiver, which isn't saying much. He's kind of up for trade right now there's been trade talks about sterling shepherd to the ravens for a little bit so i don't know what i want to do with him maybe i will just trade up to the ravens because of the talks about it kenny galladay will do virtually nothing but we can't really do much about him because he has so much cap penalty on his contract that we're going to be forced to keep him darius slayton is a question mark and Kadarius tony is a question mark as well because they also have wandale robinson who they got in the second round and whenever they selected wandale robinson it was basically confirmed that the Giants wanted to trade Kadarius Tony because he wasn't show showing up to training camp. So I don't know where, what we're going to do with him, but I definitely tr will try not to trade Kadarius Tony, but it might happen. But um, looking at the rest of the team, hopefully Saquon Barkley can actually have a season without an injury because if he doesn't, then it might be it for him with his time on the Giants, but he is a great player whenever he is on the field. Tyrod Taylor, I will keep as my starting quarterback over Daniel Jones. Just don't think Daniel Jones is the future. I just want to see uh, how Tyrod Taylor will do for a year. Maybe he will be the starter, but in this simulation, I will keep him as the starter. Uh, Jordan Atkins, uh, Akins, my bad, not Atkins, is our starting tight end as a yikes, and this entire team is just a yikes. Defensively, it gets a little bit better with um, Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Xavier McKinney, um, Ojari, Kayvon Thibodeau, Adoree Jackson. Eh, it's not really that much better, but there is a few key pieces here, especially Kayvon Thibodeau. But, um, yeah, someone's knocking at my door. I think I got to go get that. Actually, never mind. Someone else got that. <laughs> it's kind of weird to talk right now. It's, um, I don't know how loud I am being in my room, so it's kind of hard to do this. Anyways, specialist. We got Kadarius Tony. I'm going to put him in the slot, of course. Wendell Robinson behind him. Um, Holmes, I'm going to start in the slot just that way he can get a little bit more reps. Yeah, he's only 23 years old, so maybe we can develop him. I don't know. Uh, Belton. I'm, I'm going to actually make Belton. My starting linebacker because he has the most potential here. I guess he's not here. Where is Belton? I'm confused. Whatever. I guess Blake Martinez will be the starter then. Then Crowder will be second string. Just move it back to the way it was. And yeah, we should be looking pretty good for season one. I didn't really change much with the playbooks because I want to see how the Giants do with Tyrod Taylor for the start. And it's now time to get into the midseason mark. Okay, so here we are at the midseason mark. Coming off a win to the Panthers as we are 5-2 second in the division. That's usually how year one goes for us. It seems like the team's doing well all around except for our passing offense um, and our rushing defense. But usually in year one of simulation of Madden, the team does really well, then falls off. That's how it always works for some reason. But um, yeah, we got Jordan Aikens. Or, sure, we'll resign our punter because he has start at and he's 24. Why not? I don't know why I upped the money on that, but he signed. Antonio Williams and literally no one here that we need to resign or worry about. So I'm not going to worry about that. And a smoke detector is going off. Ow. Okay, now I'm going to just simulate the playoffs. And here we are in the playoffs, year one, making the playoffs, 10-7. and seven. What seed did we get coming off a win to the Commanders? We got the sixth seed. How did we do that? <laughs> That's quite interesting. Okay, stats and awards. Tyrod Taylor did not do well, but he did pretty good for his overall. 21st best offense. The defense is what carried it. That's not really surprising, but not a bad season for Tyrod Taylor. Almost 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. That's pretty good, actually. The completion percentage could be a little bit better. Barkley, 4.4 per carry, 1,221 yards, and uh, 1,500 um, yards with 357 carries. Great year, great comeback year for no injury. Uh, Sterling Shepard did pretty good. I still might end up trading him to the Ravens. Uh, Jordan Aikens did especially well. That's surprising. Galladay, of course, doing virtually nothing. Kadarius Tony getting uh, the limited reps. 
Blake Martinez, 126 tackles, tackles for a loss, 19 for Dexter Lawrence, sacks 5.5 for Cable and Thibodeau, interceptions is 4 for Blake Martinez, safety is 1 for Leonard Williams, and 1 defensive touchdown for Xavier McKinney. So anyways guys, apart from that, it is now time to see if we can beat the Buccaneers in the wild card round to move on to the divisional round with Tyrod Taylor, and we don't, not really a surprise, I'm not really upset about it either, so it's now time to move in to the offseason. Here we are in the offseason as the Cowboys absolutely humiliate Kenny Pickett and Steelers in the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers wins another MVP. Urban Meyer wins coach of the year. Nice. Um, unfortunately, you cannot edit the um, coaches until the next Madden. But uh, Desmond Redder wins rookie of the year. And uh, Arnold something apparently wins also the defensive rookie of the year. Falcons are balling out. I don't know how to pronounce that last name. But looking in to the offensive upgrade, see if we got any at the end of the year. Barkley gets Superstar Dev, that's huge. Akins gets Star Dev. I mean, I'm not going to re-sign him, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Blake Martinez gets Star Dev. That's, I don't know if that's big, is it? No, he's going to start aggressing soon, so it's not really that huge. I'm surprised Julian Love didn't get one, but Xavier McKinney also got Superstar Dev, so the defense really did ball out this year, and I am happy about that. So we're going to move into the recent players here and the retirements to see who retires and who resigns. I don't think we're going to have any retirements. I don't think Tyrod Taylor will retire. Yeah, no one will retire. Hopefully, Kenny Galladay retires. I mean, it won't happen, but <laughs> one can hope. NFC East, nobody retires in the NFC East. We're going to see who we got here for the players ready to negotiate. And Jordan Akins and nobody here that I want. So apart from that, guys, it is now time to move into free agency. Here we are after free agency. I made an offer on Rashad Penny. It's just a cheap offer for a backup, and he didn't accept. But we got Nikel Roby Coleman just as a depth of DB because we really have nothing, and free agency was honestly really bad. But uh, apart from that, let's get into the draft. In the draft at pick number four, I am picking up an absolutely goaded QB, Mike Allen out of Clemson. Hidden development, 92 throw power, 86 speed. He is an actual athlete. He runs a 4.59. He's going to be our QB for the future. And with another pick, we got tight end Justin Hudson out of Washington. Hidden development. He looks like he's going to be a pretty big player. Six foot four, two thirty five. And in the second round, I'm picking up defensive back Richard Ferris. Hidden development out of BYU. Looks pretty good. Here we are after the draft as Allen is a 73 overall and Hudson is also a 73 overall with the boost 72 without it. So it looks like we definitely have our QBs of the future here. Daniel Jones is going to be shipped off immediately because I did not pick up his fifth year contract. So, oh, he's going to the Buccaneers is what it's going to look like. Can I get your first round pick for Daniel Jones? Is that a possibility? Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> no way. First round pick. for Well, that wouldn't be realistic. I'm not going to be not going to be like that. Realistically, I, I bet I can get a third at most. So I'm just going to be realistic about it. Daniel Jones, a third at most. I'm sure like Baker Mayfield went for a fifth. So that would be the best possible situation. Sterling Shepard, though, I want to trade away and see what I can get from the Ravens, even though he did have the best year on our team. I just don't really see the need for him. Let's see if the Ravens have the cap room. No, the Ravens don't even have the cap room in the first place. So who has high interest in this man? Where does it make sense for him to go? Um... Ravens had the high interest. Is anyone else? Titans? They don't have the cap room either. Vikings? Is that the Vikings? The Vikings have the cap room to do it. And KJ Osborne would honestly not be that bad of a decision to pick up. Daniel Hunter, Zadarius Smith, Brian O'Neill. We already have our offensive tackles. So we don't need him. Dalvin Tomlinson, Garrett Bradbury. Garrett Bradbury would actually be a realistic decision. Garrett Bradbury and a fifth round pick for Sterling Shepard. I feel like that's good. There it is. Sterling Shepard for Garrett Bradbury and a fifth round pick. And our offensive line has improved for our um, future QB. He's got Kenny Galladay, unfortunately, as his wide receiver one. Kadarius Tony, Darius Slayton, Wondell Robinson. We've got Saquon Barkley, Tyrod Taylor at the backup. Defensively looking into it. Oh, it looks like that DB we picked up is a low overall because he's not even showing up on here. So I won't even bother to try and find him, unfortunately. And um, yeah. Specialist, what do we got? Kadarius, Tony, Wandale Robinson. Yeah, everything here looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to change up my schemes. I usually always go with Tampa Bay's offensive playbook. If I, I guess I can't scroll down to it. There we go. And we're going to go to offensively. Where's Tampa Bay? TB. There it is. Tampa Bay. I probably just went all the way around. But anyways, guys, apart from that, we got our new QB. And it is now time to move in to the midseason mark. Here we are at the midseason mark as we are one in six. It seems that we would be better off with Tyrod Taylor or I was just right from the previous season. Previously, I did say 
that um, okay. season one, you're just goaded for no reason. Then after that, you can, the team kind of just sucks. Saquon Barkley is here. Of course, I want him back. Injury is off in this, so don't really have to worry about him getting injured. Blake Martinez, I don't know if I want to do it for that long because at 28, you already start regressing. I mean, it won't show it here. It won't go that far back, but still, I don't want him there for that long. Garrett Bradbury, we just traded for so Brad Burry, Garrett Bradbury, my bad, not Barry. And he accepts the deal. Darius Slayton, I do want because I don't plan to keep on most of the receivers here. So he's pretty young. Julian Love, I will keep as well. Let's give him that five-year deal, spread it out. Pretty cheap contract overall, and he resigns. Roby Coleman, no. Ricky Seals Jones, no. No, no. Tyrod Taylor's no. But um, yeah, team's probably not going to do that good. What's holding us down this time? Everything is just bad. Okay, let's move into the playoffs. Here we are in the playoffs, not making the playoffs, going 6-11. and 11. All right, then. What did our rookie QB do? He did amazing. It was just the rest of the team that was bad. <laughs> D defense just did not show up this year at all. 17 interceptions is not acceptable, but overall, great stats. Better than um, Tyrod Taylor, other than the interceptions. 4.6 per carry, 14 touchdowns, 1,000 yards from Barkley. Huge down year. Kenny Galladay actually producing numbers. 1,100 yards, 5 touchdowns. Darius Slayton, 1 yard shy from 1,000 yard season, but he did pretty good. Kadarius Tony upping the numbers. Justin Hudson having a great rookie year. Looking at it uh, defensively, Tay Crowder apparently has the most tackles. Interesting. Tackles for loss, 17 for Dexter Lawrence, and sacks is 8 for Leonard Williams. Interceptions, 5 for Adoree Jackson. Safeties is 0. Defensive touchdowns is 1 for Julian Love. So apart from that, very bad season, even though the stats were pretty good. Let's move in to the offseason. Here we are in the offseason mm -hmm. as Demarcus Lawrence wins the Super Bowl MVP and the Cowboys win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And there are no awards here for the New York Giants, unfortunately. I mean, we had a terrible season, so it's not really that big of a surprise. But anyways, looking into the team, what do we got? Superstar on Allen, Mike Allen here. Did he get that or did he come with that? He got that. Um, how? I didn't see him win Rookie of the Year. And he had 17 receptions on a season. But sure. Hudson also has Superstar Dev. Did he come with that or did he get that? He came with Superstar Dev. That was a great pick. And Kenny Galladay is regressing. Hopefully, we can eventually cut him from the team. And what do we got here? Xavier McKinney. Adoree Jackson gets Superstar Dev. This is the guy that I picked in the second round, Richard Ferris. He finally shows up. 70 overall, not that bad. And um, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully, the team can do better next season. I think we need a new receiver threat other than Kenny Galladay. So I'm going to look for that in free agency. But first, we got to see the retirements and the re-signed players. I'm pretty sure I re-signed everyone that I already wanted to re-sign. So it's not really not that big of a deal. And um, yeah, let's have this load of 2022 retirements. We're going to have the, where is it? NFC South, NF NFC East. What am I doing? I'm stupid. NFC East, Jason Kelsey retires. So I guess that helps us a little bit. And um, players ready to negotiate. Who do we have? We have Blake Martinez, Nicole Robicoman, and everyone else here is just a no. Not really interested in those guys. So it's now time to move into free agency. Hopefully we can get a, a good receiver of some sort. Here we are after free agency as I got a big time receiver in Scary Terry. He's going to be wearing number eight, which is interesting. And I'm going to try and straight away um, uh, Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Tony could get a little bit more involved. I'm going to try to do that next season. But that's all we got for free agency because Kenny Galladay is holding down our cap room. So let's get into the draft. In the first round, I'm picking up a middle linebacker, KC Miner out of Michigan State. 91 speed, a 6'2", uh, 233. 91 speed for someone who's 6'2", 233 on a linebacker? That's ridiculous. He's going to be our pick, and he seems to be a pretty good one. And here we are after the draft. This is what the team is looking like. We got Scary Terry here, Mike Allen. I want to trade away Kenny Galladay right now, but what do I want on defense? How good is that linebacker? He has a 70 overall. Not the best that I wanted. I'm going to move this guy up. He was my second round pick as well. So we're going to move him up. And then uh, why is... Interesting. I want Miner to be... um. My starting middle linebacker. I need to trade for a DB probably would be the best course of action here. But first, I want to... Well, actually, it would be best if I just traded for him first, the DB, and then worked it out from there. So, Kenny Galladay, get off my team, please. Kenny Galladay is getting paid more than Scary Terry. So, that is a no-no for me. Who can actually accept this dude's contract? Who got close to accepting it? Was that the Jaguar? The Jets can actually accept this contract. I'll trade Kenny Galladay away for a fifth-round pick. Take that cap hit. Thank you. He's off my team. I don't want him anymore. So I'm not going to trade for a DB. I'll just probably sign one in free agency now. And um, Tom Brady is here. 
that's not up for question because I don't have the cap room. So, um, unfortunately not. But that would be cool storyline. AJ Boye, though, I am going to sign. AJ Boye is on the team now. I'm going to update the roster and see what we got from there. AJ Boye will just be a fill-in player for now just for that DB spot. We got this. And let's go to team. Let's move this up. Chill dress. And, um, yeah. Looking pretty good. Specialist. Got all that. He's going to move up. And then I'm going to move my starting middle linebacker minor to the sub linebacker so that way he can get more reps in of course and sub linebacker where is my there he is he's a 66 yikes he's a 66 for that for the sub linebacker but i'm gonna do it anyways so he's gonna be the starting mid middle linebacker and the starting sub linebacker to get more reps in and it's now time to move into the midseason mark here we are at the midseason mark coming off a win to the rams here to face the five and one new york jets as we are bottom of the division three and four, unfortunately, looking at the players ready to negotiate. Let's see who we got here. Dexter Lawrence is a guy I would love to have back, of course. He is he hasn't really done too good on the stat sheet, but you know, we don't really have any other defensive tackles at the moment. Leonard Williams, I'd like to bring back as well. He's probably our highest sack leader so far. Adoree Jackson, what do we got? Looking pretty decent. We're gonna re-sign him as well. And Xavier McKenning, let's sign him back and up that. And he's re-signed Cave on Thibodeau. He should have a fifth year option. He shouldn't be here in the first place. Exact same thing with Evan Neal. So I'm gonna have to edit this as I always do because anytime you create a player, it always puts them on a three year deal, not a four or five. Kayvon Thibodeau should have five years on his contract, not four. Let's back out quickly. And I'm also gonna do the same thing with Evan Neal. So let's go to adjust lineup and I'm gonna change our playbook to actually the, since we're in a three, four, I'm gonna change it to the Ravens defensive playbook. Maybe that will work better because of our pass rush because we are trying to pass rush with Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojari. I don't know how you pronounce that, but you know who I mean. Um, looking into the players ready to negotiate, going back to Evan Neal here. And Adore Jackson wants more money too, so I don't know how much more I'm going to give him, but I would like him back on the team if we could get him. And Evan Neal, please load. There we go. Let's give him that five-year deal. And do I want to bring back... Let's bring that back, Holmes, real quick. Cheap contract, and he's a solid player. He's back. Glowinski, probably. I don't know. This guy, I definitely want another year of he's my left guard he's my starting left guard my only left guard so i do want another five-year deal with him let's up that and what else do we got i guess it glitches out sometimes so we're gonna have to wait on that and let's go to players ready to negotiate and what else do we have belton do do all, all of these guys should have five year four year four to five year deals but i'm not gonna worry about that and yeah oh the other guy that guard that i put did i put a five-year deal on him i meant to put a four-year deal but either way the rebuild will be over by the time it's time to give him a contract so anyways guys apart from that it's time to get to the playoffs here we are in the playoffs coming off a win to the commanders as we are 12 and 5 top of the division here to face the 10 and 7 cowboys in the playoffs that's surprising stats and awards let's see what we got from mike allen was a beast fifth passing yards eighth passing touchdowns sixth best offense in the nfl 10th best defense that's a turnaround year. It seems like the Ravens' playbook seemed to be working pretty well. Mike Allen still with 17 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, which is kind of unacceptable. 36 touchdowns, though, 4,600 yards. Saquon Barkley, 5.2 per carry is a huge average. 23 touchdowns, 1,500 yards. That should be an X factor. Scary Terry, 96 receptions, 1,300 yards, 12 uh, touchdowns. That's great. Kadarius Tony seems to be a red zone threat with nine touchdowns along with Justin Hudson. Great years for both of them looking into it defensively. Dante Dontrell, my second round pick, 104 tackles, minor with 104, 104 tackles. Dontrell had 110, minor had 104 is what I meant to say. Tackles for loss, 16 for Kayvon Thibodeau, that's a huge improvement. Sacks, 7 for Aziz, and interceptions, 5 for Xavier McKinney. That could be an X factor, I think it will be. Leonard Williams with the safety along with minor and zero defensive touchdowns. So I think um, that should be an X factor for Xavier McKinney. Let's see if we can beat the Cowboys in the wild card they're really a good team in simulation so it probably wouldn't be surprised if we lost and we won we didn't just win we embarrassed them 42 to 14 let's see if we can beat the niners to move on to the conference championship can we do it and we don't 31 to 21 it's always the the divisional round that's so hard to get past for no reason i don't know why anyways let's move into the offseason and the panthers and shaq thompson wins the super bowl mvp and looking in urban meyer wins another coach of the year that's ridiculous dude Looks like Trevor Lawrence is just such a go-to QB that it makes him look good. Anyways, let's look at the roster, see if there is any development upgrades. Barkley better have an X Factor. He doesn't. I'm going to give it to him. For those guys complaining, oh my god, you're cheating. You're putting an X Factor. 1,500 yards, 5.2 per carry, and 23 touchdowns in a season doesn't sound like an X Factor to you. And we're also in a passing scheme. 
So he did all that in a passing scheme. The dude's a beast. He deserves a superstar X Factor for sure. And that's what I'm going to give to him. Stop complaining. Oh, you're cheating. I'm not cheating. I'm being realistic. Um, everyone else here, I hate it how offensive linemen can't get development upgrades. It's one of the stupidest things ever. And uh, Kadarius Tony should have a superstar, but I'm not going to give it to him because I know people will get pissed. And uh, Miner has superstar. Did he get that? He had to have gotten, not, had to have not gotten that. He really didn't have an insane year, but pretty good year for a rookie at least. And uh, yeah, I need some middle linebackers in free agency. Xavier McKinney does get the X factor. Not really too surprised by that. And yeah, apart from that, guys, we're going to look into the retirements and we are going to look into the resign players here. I believe all I need to resign is a Dory Jackson. And then also I want to try and pick up a middle linebacker in free agency for our fourth and final season. So let's see what we got here. 2023 retirements. We have um, NFC South. No, NFC, NFC East. I'm always an idiot with that. NFC East. Nobody retires once again. Uh, players ready to negotiate. Adoree Jackson, what did you want? You wanted a bonus. Cool with me. Let's up that. And he resigns. Everyone else here. Glowinski. I don't really need you, I guess. I mean, I'll have to pick up another one, but it's fine. $94 million to spend in free agency. Thank God Kenny Galladay's gone. Let's get into it. So it is the final season, and I went all in. Tyran Matthew, huge deal. I'm going to move Xavier McKinney over to free safety. You got Justin Tucker, Chandler Jones, who I'm going to move to left end, Marcus Peters, Kenneth Murray, Devondre Campbell, Darius Slay, and Jermaine Johnson. I didn't realize that uh, I thought Chandler Jones was honestly going to reject my contract, but he accepted. So we also got Jermaine Johnson and Chandler Jones. So Jermaine Johnson's going to be rotational. Let's get into the draft. And in the draft, I'm picking up a right guard, Jared Holt, to replace Glowinski. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. <laughs> so this is the team after the draft. Holt is a 72 overall with a boost, 70 without it. But the boost is what matters because that is his total overall during the season. Looks like Wandale Robinson left the team. I don't know why, but whatever. I guess I didn't pick up his um, contract extension. And um, yeah, this is what the team looks like. It looks like an absolute beast. But apart from that, guys, if we don't make the playoffs, I will be quite upset. It is now time to move in to the playoffs because we don't need to resign anyone at the midseason mark. Here we are in the playoffs going 15 and 2, crushing the rest of our division, coming off a big win against the Buccaneers. Not even a big win. I'm sure we would have had the first seed regardless. But um, yeah, Chiefs also got the first seed, so that might be hard to pass. I see the Cowboys aren't in the playoffs, so that is a big W because they are really hard to beat in simulation. But it looks like Mike Allen had another B season. He's probably top 10 for MVP. He actually wins the league MVP. No way. That's insane. Top 10 pass rating as well. Eighth best offense in the NFL and best defense in the NFL. Mike Allen, 4,500 yards, 45 touchdowns. It got that interception thing under hold. And um, completion percentage, 67%. Great season. Saquon Barkley, 4.8 per carry. 20 touchdowns is great. And 1,400 yards. Mike Allen's way more athletic than this. Really, 4.3 per carry, 281 and one touchdown. He definitely would have had more in real life. Um, I mean, he's not a real life player, but you know what I mean. Scary Terry, 1,300 yards, 102 receptions, 11 touchdowns. Great season. Kadarius Tony, 12 touchdowns, 1,000 yards. That's going to be superstar development. Hudson's been pretty solid for us across the rebuild, so that's good. And defensively, Xavier McKinney, 106 tackles, tackles for a loss, 23 for Chandler Jones. Sacks, 14 and a half for Chandler Jones, a beast. Interceptions, 8 for Dory Jackson, a beast. Glad I resigned him. Interceptions, ones, I mean, safeties, one for Chandler Jones. Defensive touchdowns is a one for Dory Jackson. We had eight interceptions, one touchdown. Dory Jackson is definitely going to get an X factor. But um, yeah, let's see. We're going to be place, facing the divisional round. If we can't get past the divisional round, I will cry. It will make me very upset. Eight, nine Packers, please. 15 and two Giants simulation. Please don't screw me over. <sighs> Dude, it's always the divisional round. Like, I don't know what you guys want me to do. Well, oh, you're just bad at rebuilds. I'm not bad at rebuilds. I built a God squad of a team. And I can't get past the divisional round ever. And my QB wins league MVP. 99 at 99. He's a 93. My O-line's actually pretty solid. <laughs> and we score 16 points. And give this number one defense gives up 31 points in the divisional round. So frustrating. Anyways, guys, apart from that, I thank you guys all for watching. And um, apart from that, guys, let me know which team you'd like me to rebuild next. And I'll see you guys all in the next one.